Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Bikini and the Brain. I am here with my lovely co-host, Ashley Hot Saucer Kaltwasser. Ew. <laughs> they I don't have any hot sauce. You know the hot saucer is because I had your hot sauce last I night. I know. I don't like that. <laughs> so we had this. If you guys have ever, <laughs> someone sent us these, like, I don't know, like 30 bottles of yeah, hot sauce. I still it had, use it. I do too. It's so good. It's legit hot sauce. And, um, and so we were trying to come up with the best name and the best name we could come up with was Ashley Hot Saucer. <laughs> it is the best name. She was. <laughs> you say so, Adam, if you say so. I thought it was pretty good. It, you know, it was clever. It was it's clever. Good. That was definitely a me one, right? Yeah. Yeah. I gotta so, give it to you. You have the best puns I was on, in all of Vegas. Okay. I was on fire yesterday. I hit, I reached my oh, absolute more. peak, my absolute uh, dad joke peak. And oh, I, was I thought like, you, you had the peak like last week. Yeah, it was last week. It was the, said yesterday. the Roomba. Yeah. It was the Roomba one. Okay, here's my, this is what it's like living with me. Here's uh, a, <laughs> so, so Kimber was mad. She's like, the Roomba ate my, my tie for her robe. She's like, the Roomba ate my tie. I was like, oh, that's, that's so, um, I'm like, yeah, it's, it's really gone downhill. It used to be a lot better when I first got it. It's getting a little old. I think it's suffering from Roomba toid arthritis. <laughs> And she, she was, she was busting. I was laughing so hard that my own joke. That was pretty clever. It was good. That was really. I was clever. like, I've I peaked. You. I've absolutely peaked. And it's all downhill it's all from down, here. I'll, it's just gonna get less clever by the day. I don't think I could. I don't. I think that's the ultimate dad joke. I don't. I don't you set know. that one up nicely. Yeah, it was a good setup, right? <laughs> I gotta say, that was pretty good. <laughs> so today we are gonna go into a Q and A. Yes, it's been a hot minute since we've done one. So Yeah, we're going to do a little Q&A. The people have questions for us, and we have the answers, so, you know. Yeah, and uh, you know what? Let's, let's go. first, guys, I want to give you guys a head. I'm excited about it. We're getting up a, a giant mirror in the posing room today. It's a, it's a rear view mirror. I oh, mean, literally, the rear view. <laughs> yeah, good job. See, Ashley, I'm I rubbing mean, off on you. It's only taken a few years. <laughs> but we have uh, in our posing room, we had a pretty big posing room, but we don't have that that mirror that's up top on the wall high and so now we have a 10 foot uh rear view mirror yeah so basically whenever you're in your back pose you can see what your glutes look like by just looking at it yeah so yeah so it's, it's hard to to explain yeah. over a podcast without seeing how it's set up but yeah that's kind of cool you yeah. know i've always wondered what my butt looks like back there because <laughs> i didn't know you know it's yeah. like it's behind me so i'd never see it yeah, so I've uh, yeah she doesn't really know because I've been sending her just enhanced pictures these whole years. It's yeah. like it, it's working, it's working great. <laughs> um, and then we're gonna be doing some upgrades in the gym, but our posing class is gonna be next Saturday. So is it not this Saturday, but next Saturday? We said right. Oh, I was unaware. I thought we were doing it first week of November. Oh, first week of November. But Never mind. I mean, See, we talked to Ashley about it. First on. week of November, Saturday. Okay. So, yeah, that's because Sam is out of town the 29th, that, oh, which would technically okay. be, unless you want to do it that no, day. We'll do it, we'll do it the first okay. week of Saturday. First week of November is November 5th. There we go. November 5th is a Saturday. And we're going to have some more surprises coming to you from our gym. We're actually having, um, we're going to be switching our inside part of the gym all over to just legs and glutes. And we're going to be doing some cool um, workouts with the team and stuff and some booty days. And then our, we're going to have an outdoor gym area too. So some cool things happening here. Anyway, um, but that being said, we should jump into, I just got excited about that. I, know, I whenever there's gym too. upgrades, I'm most excited about it. It's Dude, fine. it's awesome. I love it. I can't wait for the new equipment coming too. Oh my yes. goodness. Oh, they, they are, November 5th is being shipped and then we'll get it 18 days after November 5th in the U.S. and then um, a week from then. So yeah. hopefully before the Olympia, it's going to be like right before. It's gonna yeah. Be and during the Olympia time, we should just kind of briefly mention we're going to have a lot of team activities and yes. up into any, I guess, any competitor really that's in the Vegas area for yeah. posing. And, and I believe Celeste is going to Celeste is going to come. Um, Lindsay is going to be doing a makeup thing. Cool. Yeah, a makeup class type of scenario. Um, and there's going to be there's quite a few other things, uh, booty workouts, things like that, glute workouts. Um, we're going to do team lifts, stuff like that. It'll be fun. Whoop. Yeah. All right. Whoop. Cool. So, and that's open to anyone that wants to come. Uh, posing's gonna, we're gonna have multiple posing classes. You guys can come out. I, I think we have to have multiple because there's gonna be too many people here. So, yeah. All right. Let's. What's our first question? So, our first question, Adam. It says, "My coach has put me on a very low calorie and minimum of one hour of cardio per day. How do I fix this?" So, I think like first and foremost, what what is the very low calorie? I don't know. That's kind of. Uh, I mean. It would be helpful to have a number amount, but even then, we're all kind of different in that aspect, you know? Yeah. But that is, 
That is quite a bit of cardio. I don't know if I've done that much. Yeah, I had another girl email me, and she was doing three hours a day. Um, oh, my gosh. Yeah, I know. What the heck? It's crazy. Some of these, oh, my God. It's not even the most I've seen. It's not even the most I've seen. I've seen Shit. one girl do four. One girl do four. What the heck? It's, it's crazy. Why? 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 Yeah. You know, here's, why? here's the thing. Why? <laughs> oh, no. Why? <laughs> I know. I did about an hour and a half of cardio on Saturday, and I was, I was, I was almost dying. Almost. Dying. But that was it. You were hiking. <laughs> that was hiking. I, was like, I know. I don't know if we could. <laughs> I was, cardio. It was so, it's neat, not, maybe. The, can, can we go into the how, how that hike was so, that was like the hardest hike ever. You're going to really? love it. Well, it's not, it's like you're hiking through like, like gravel and sand. Like, because it's, it, you're in this like, I don't know what you call it. I'm not an outdoorsy guy from LA. So but like you're, you know, where water went through. So there's like channels and there's like, you know, rocks all around you. So it's, it's grinded down rock. So it's like sand almost and little gravel. And so the whole time it's like hiking on a beach and it's slightly uphill. Ooh. Oh, it's like a great glute workout. You got to go. Uh, Ooh. you got to go with, yeah. Is your glute sore today? Yeah. A little bit. <gasps> oh, calves and glutes. Calves are really oh, sore. Calves. The yeah. calves are mooing. The calves <laughs> so, are mooing to, and you wore your sunscreen. Yeah. yeah I was all sunscreen. And your, yeah. and your little. My hat. I got this hat, thing. this like ninja covered hat. I was like, Ashley would be so proud of me. Yes. We got to wear that sunscreen in this Vegas sun, you know? If you guys are in Vegas, okay, we'll, we'll, I'm going to make a video of like the places to go, but that's like the best hike, Lake Mead. But anyway, it was like an hour and a half. It was really great. A Lake Mead hike. It's a owl watch trail or something like that. Anyway. Um, awesome. You should go. So I will go. Well, the, here's the thing with this ca high cardio, low calorie scenario. So one, um, there's two, number one. Why? Yeah, there's, there's yeah. One why. <laughs> and I think that's the, actually, I think that's the most important part of it, right? Because there's two, there's two lines here that you have to look at. You have to look at, okay, maybe your coach is, is doing things that are unnecessary for you to get in shape. Maybe, maybe, just maybe, you're a little piggy in the off season and like to eat everything. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> and your coach has no options. Maybe. <gasps> Gasp. <laughs> Gasp, he said it. No, that's, that's the reality of things though, right? So what are you doing in your off season that requires you to do that much cardio in your in season, right? Now, some people are stubborn though, and they're not those, the, they're not just people who are eating too much, right? Some people are stubborn and I have those too, but some people are just, you know, not being realistic. You can't go and just go crazy in the off season and then blame your coach in the in season. When you say, I want to do a show in 12 weeks and you need to lose 24 pounds. Yeah. That's yeah. You know what? That's, that's your bad you should have stuck to your diet a little bit closer in the off season. Mm -hmm. Now, if your coach is just, so you got to decipher what is it, right? Is it me and I got to take some personal responsibility or is it the coach and you started, you only have to lose 12 pounds and you have 12 weeks to do it and your coach started you right there right away. Okay, so if, you, if you're just, you have to lose 12 pounds, 10 pounds, maybe even 15 pounds, and you got 16 week prep to do it and your coach started you at an hour of cardio or started you at 45 minutes of cardio, five, six days a week, in phase one, well, that's a probably bad coaching. You should probably look, you know, you, you could ask them before you start coaching, like, you know, what your cardio, um, you know, methodology and whatnot. Um, but if it's because you're in week, you know, you're four weeks out and you still have eight pounds to go because you lost 20 already, well, that's probably more of a you thing, you know. It's, it's hard. It's a hard thing to say. But is it the coach's problem? fault is what you got to identify. And that comes down to um, – that comes down to where he started you at and what you had to lose to start. You yeah, know? totally. I would also ask, like, why would you choose a show so soon to yeah. where you have to put yourself in that scenario? So, I mean, I guess the only other, the only scenario would make sense for somebody to do that. And I mean, it still is not good, but like, let's say they were doing the Olympian and it's show you, obviously you got to do it, you know, um, yeah. or something that like the Arnold where you sign a contract so far in advance. But like, if we're, we're, I'm assuming this is like an NPC bikini competitor or whatever. Why, why do that? Just pick one farther out. Guess what? Shows are always going to be there. They're always going to be there. And the good thing about <laughs> bikini shows is they they happen every weekend all over the USA, especially for NBC, even more so. So why are we picking a show that you have to put yourself through that misery? Like, just pick, pick one further out. If you messed up, just realize it's going to take longer now for you to prep. I wouldn't do that ish. Yeah. And I will say, you know, 95% of our clients are doing less than 45 minutes of cardio. I'm doing 
like zero. <laughs> but we do have some that are just stubborn, you know, that are going to be like the thicker skin people who just, we can't get them dialed in. And it takes a lot to get them dial, dialed in for some reason. You might be that person. I would look at, in that scenario though, I always look at hormones first. If someone's getting into like 45 plus minutes cardio, um, or let's say even past an hour or an hour, really, I'm like, okay, let's just make sure that there's nothing causing this besides just your body being stubborn. Some people have st stubborn bodies, you know, and it's, everything is on like that spectrum. You know, you have your perfectly middle people who are everything's average for, you have your very extreme people who don't need to do any cardio at all. And, and Ashley's just earned her no cardio this time. She has to do cardio usually. <laughs> She's earned her no cardio. And you have your people on the other end of the spectrum, which are, you know, they just, they're, they seem to have thicker skin. It's hard for them to show cuts. They just, it's harder for them to lose body fat and they have to do those things to get in shape. And it's, you know, it's unfortunate because you have those extremes. Um, I have a girl right now getting ready for nationals who's eating into the show. Um, like, you know, she's at 4,600 calories, I think right now, eating into nationals. Jeez, it's a lot, a lot yeah. of food. Yeah. Uh, I think we're at 15 minutes cardio three times a week just to keep her moving. And then, and then I have someone getting ready for nationals that's already eight weeks out at an hour of cardio eating like 1,200 calories. And they're the, they're the same height class. Like it doesn't, you know what I mean? It's just different per person. So yes, there's scenarios where it's the coach, but you do have to, if you're that person who has to do that much cardio, you don't want to do that much. You're going to have to really pay attention in your off season. You're going to have to really be a lot more diligent in your off season than like the girl I was talking about, an example who was eating 4,600 calories um, going into the show. I mean, honestly, in, the, in her off season, the girl that's eating 4,600, she can kind of do whatever she wants. Like in the off season, she can, you know, she could be one of these like, um, bikini pros that you see there eat whatever they want in the off season and get in shape. There are those people that can do that, but don't use them as an example if you're not that person and, and be real with yourself on that. I'm not that person. I wish I was, but it's just, you know, so there you go. Yeah. I'm not that person either, you know? Well, okay. Next question. I have an insane sugar addiction and it's like a drug. How do I kick this horrible habit? So that's a yeah. new one for sure. Oh yeah, definitely. So listen up. 2022, what a time to be alive. There <laughs> are so many sugar-free options out there. And I feel like sweeteners are getting so good and food items are getting so good. You don't really notice a difference in some things, you know? I think, like, initially when you tr switch over from, let's say, pure sugar to, like, stevia, you might notice some bitterness. But even, I would say, like, aspartame, sucralose is a little closer to the taste of sugar than, you know, than stevia is but a lot of people like stevia because it doesn't usually cause digestion issues or anything uh but with that being said there are so many like diet hacks that you can do when you're craving sugar you know um sugar-free gum <laughs> brushing your teeth i know it sounds simple but even that is is great because it kind of gets that taste out of your mouth that you would want something sweet with but um you know crystal light Diet cola, even your little sugar-free coffee thing right there. Yeah, I see you drinking. Love it. <laughs> like there's so many sugar-free options out there now, even like protein bars, protein cookies, those freaking protein rolls from Legendary. They taste so delicious. But there's so many cool items out there. The only disadvantage I would say to those is sometimes they are a little more pricey to buy the sugar-free option than like, you know. Yeah. The, the true sugar option, but truly, if you take a look at like your local health food store or what is it called, um, vitamin shop or something like that, GNC, you can find a lot of snacks that are sugar free that are, are quite tasty. And I think like, you know, like I said, initially you might taste a little bit of a difference, but if you do it enough, it'll become more of a habit and you won't notice the difference, you know? Now I'm to the point where I, I don't think I notice a difference between like Diet Coke and regular Coke or whatever. I always have to have Adam taste test it for me because <laughs> I, I can't tell the difference. So I think it's more of like a, you got to open your horizons to the sugar-free options. I think sometimes when you see a label that says sugar-free, it kind of scares people because they might have had a bad experience with a sugar-free item like five years ago when it didn't taste as good. And now it's like, it's, it's so on point now. It's like, it's incredible, yeah. you know? And I think the other thing too, is there's a lot of YouTube people who will do protein recipes, like protein sugar recipes. Um, I know, so pretty much every night, Kimber will make like this uh, muffin. It's like a protein muffin with, and it's just protein powder, some, um, Kodiak cake, and then, um, some, some like stevia stuff. And I don't know, it's, just, it's the way they make it. I don't know how she does it, but it's like a protein muffin. And then she puts a little bit of, um, 
what's that like low calorie ice cream on it too? I have no Halo idea. top? Halo top. Yeah. A little of that on top of it. So it's like a, it's like a treat every night and it's like, you know, 200 calories tops, protein, like 40 grams and, and whatnot. I have a little more protein than most. So mine's a little bit higher in calories. Um, and then now she's making some ice cream out of just protein. It's literally just protein powder and like some, I don't know. I wish I knew. Like, I don't know. <laughs> it's like, I just eat it. But yeah, there's just so many things you can do. And, um, you know, just looking on YouTube for those recipes. Um, we could post one up too. We did one a long time ago. Where we did like taste tests of all these, this, um, all these sugar-free or low-calorie foods. What was that, that muffin one we ate too? That was so good. A smart muffin. Smart muffins. Those are, those don't even make sense. Like, no. how does that even, like, they like. The main ingredient is egg white. It like defies science. I'm like, no, someone's lying to me. Like, I feel so like good. Sam, when she makes her stuff too, and here and she brings them in. I'm like, are you trying to get me fat? I know. I was like, <laughs> so, hmm, is there something in here? Like sugar? Hmm. Just some straight good. sabotage. Like, mm. <laughs> it's so good. So if you really have a sweet tooth, um, yeah, find your favorite youtube thing on on youtube and and see the different recipes out there we put them out once in a while courtney and sam put them out once in a while um on our youtube and so does kimber um you've you do you don't do too much recipe stuff not, on, no. not these days no no so uh, we'll put some more out on youtube too i think i gotta put the ice cream one out um jenna is from jennifer jennifer dory did it on hers and then kimber's been like messing with it every night and it's it's gotten to the point where it doesn't make sense i'm gonna bring i gotta bring one into you it's ridiculous. Like it, mm. I guess maybe because we're both trained though to have that, like, you know, this is ice cream with our mind at this point, but it is so good. It doesn't make sense. Like if, even if it's not as good as ice cream, I would definitely trade that for the calories right. uh, totally. you know, seven days a week. It's, it's shocking how good it is. It is a process. It yeah. is a process, but totally. uh, it is so good. So there you go. There you go. And yeah. there you have it, people. Okay. The next question, are there people you think should compete and are there people you think shouldn't i think absolutely there are people that shouldn't compete <laughs> and you know people that should i think a lot of it has to do with like lifestyle right um like is it is it uh, something you can fit within your lifestyle and your your own personal goals because i know that you know some people just they just don't have the job for it or they don't have time to take off for a competition itself and it becomes too overwhelming and People that find it miserable. I think, like, if this is something you don't enjoy, obviously it's not for you. Um, and then it's, I mean, if we're looking at genetics too, I mean, I'm going to put that more of aside because it's like this question isn't necessarily like asking are, are there people that will do well and people that won't. That's not what they're asking. More is like people should versus people who shouldn't. I think ultimately it's like a personal choice, you know? If it fits in your lifestyle and you enjoy it, heck yeah, go for it. Why not? Why not? Yeah. Why the heck not? I'm a fan of everyone competing if um, if they're dedicated to it. Yes. You know, that's the thing. Like you're, you will get some people who just say, oh, I want to compete just to compete and not really put everything into it. And I do yeah. think that that's, you know, it's unfortunate because I'll get, you know, I don't get many people like that, luckily. Um, you know, I want, I, my favorite thing to do is transformations though, because you could do something for them lifelong. So when I, people are always like, oh, you work with like, you know, big name people, whatever. I'm afraid to like, you know, you that to work with you or whatever. Um, I actually love working with transformations because you, you get to impact their life, you know, yeah. for the rest of their life. And it's really rewarding. So that's like my, my favorite thing to do. So I don't want to ever discourage the transformation people from stepping on stage. That's not, this isn't directed at you. But what I'm saying is that if you're going to do a show, you need to fully commit to yeah. doing the show mm -hmm. because if you go there you know, just because you're like, oh, I lost 20 pounds, so I want to do this because it gives me motivation. And you're one of those people who are like, well, I just need to do it because it gives me motivation. Like, understand, no one wants to be the least fit person at a fitness competition. You know, and if you're doing this as a transformation and you're not ready yet, you're going to be that person. And it doesn't feel good when you walk off the stage because you feel really good going to the show. Like, you feel really good. You're like, I've lost 20 pounds. I'm looking good. My husband's saying things to me, like all these things. And then you go to a fitness competition and you're the least fit person there then you leave feeling fat and it sucks because i've seen it happen so many times where i'm like they were so confident going to the show but they had to do that show they had to do it at this time frame they had to do it and it's like then they leave and they don't feel so good about themselves yeah. and i'm like you guys this is different this is different than transformations this is a fitness competition it's a best body competition you know and so you don't want to i don't know i think it messes with people their their psyche too much when they do that because i can knock 30 pounds off of a, off of someone and they'll feel better than they've felt in 20 years. 
and then you throw them in a fitness competition, all of a sudden they feel bad again. And I'm like, you know, it just, it sucks. So if you're going to do it, fully commit to it, fully commit to the process. Um, and that's the only time I'll say it's not for everyone. I think everyone who likes fitness should do at least one competition because it, it really shows you, you find, you find your inner, like what you can take, you know, you could find where can I push myself? What can I commit to? And I do think that it teaches you how to commit to other things in life, you know, and that's why I'm a huge fan of it. And honestly, I think that's why I've been a successful trainer too, is, um, is, you know, some would say successful in, in business as well. But I would, I, I honestly put it all, I attribute it all to prep because it teaches you dedication. It teaches you how to stick to a goal and wake up every single day and go after that goal and do the steps needed to accomplish that goal. And you have to just stay laser focused on it, you know, the whole time. So if you have that in you and you want to, or you want to pull it out of you, I say, you know, do a show, see how dedicated you can be to something, you know, cause it's going to affect you the rest of your life too. Absolutely. So, yeah. I'm, so I'm a, I guess what I say, do I agree? Well, I say, yeah, everyone should do it, I guess. If they're dedicated, if they're dedicated. Yeah. Okay. okay so there you go. Cool. <laughs> All right. So what's the average time someone would spend training a day, cardio and weights? So I guess that to, that's very, um, it's a diverse answer, I guess, because we're all kind of different, you know, but I do think there's limits. Like I think sometimes, you know, if, if you're one that has to do all that cardio, like we were talking about before, or, or it has to spend hours upon hours in the gym, like maybe you should just focus on a show that's further out rather than something so close and you're rushing. Um, so, you know, and, and I think too, is like many different people can handle more more volume yeah. than others. And I think it's not, not like a one size fit all answer when it comes to that. Uh, but I, you know, I, I would say, you know, I, the longest workouts I would have, if we're talking about weights, probably like an hour and a half. And, um, sometimes if I do like stim workouts, sometimes it'll be like an hour 45, you know, but usually it's like an hour of weights Yeah, and then cardio is always varied depending on how close I am to a show and how lean I am at that time. So my answer will be um, based on intensity. So that's always going to be the factor. So if you're, let's say, let's say you're doing some bikini sculpting and you're just trying to work specific areas of your glutes and you're trying to really work on activation. And if you look at Ashley, how she trains, a lot of her stuff is kind of bikini sculpting where she's not lifting the craziest, heaviest weight, but she's squeezing the muscle really hard, going through the proper range of motion, going through all the cues with the coaches um, and really squeezing like target areas. You're not going to be able to really like sculpt those key areas that she's trying to sculpt with like heavy loads. You, you're always going to give up something for super heavy loads. So there's that. So her intensity because of that has to go down a little bit when she's fully sculpting because she can't just throw weight around and target those key areas with precision. So because the intensity isn't going to be crazy, crazy high on certain areas, those workouts generally will have more volume. So it's always volume versus intensity. Now, if you're, um, if you're in the bikini building stage and you're sort of bikini building, bikini sculpting, Ashley's obviously in the bikini sculpting stage and then shoulders, we were going through like bikini building, I guess you'd say. So Bikini sculpting stage, we just went through. That's the focusing intensity, uh, focusing and squeezing and concentration. Your bikini building stage, it's like, hey, I want to build muscle. I need to get my base down. I need to get bigger glutes. I need bigger legs. I need bigger everything, right? Well, then that those workouts, yeah, you're probably going to be going with the higher intensity, higher volume or higher, higher intensity, lower rest periods, heavier weights. You might not need as long in the gym. You might be able to get away with doing, I mean, if you're going crazy intense, and you're really, really pushing yourself, you might only be in the gym 30 minutes. You know, you could look at the Dorian Yates workouts. If you ever want to see real intensity, go to Dorian Yates. It's called Blood and Guts um, on YouTube. It's great motivational stuff. And it's really just him in black and white filming. I remember I, used to, I bought that on VHS. That's how, how long ago I watched Blood and Guts. I was like, I remember it came out and I was like, I was like 16 years old working in this supplement shop. And it came out like the blood and guts. I like took the next day of work off and just watched it. I went to the gym and like threw up like, you know, 60 pound dumbbells. <laughs> I think it was Dorian Yates, but, um, that's like real intensity. So you, you have the, you know, Dorian Yates, Mike Menser doing these old school, um, I don't even want to say old school, but just high intensity workouts with not as much volume. So it's always volume versus intensity. You know, um, you're going to damage the muscle both ways are going to do the job. So if you, and you have to be honest with yourself too. And it's the same thing with cardio. If you're going cardio, super intense, you're going to do less cardio. If you're doing cardio and you're just like chilling and talking to your friends, yeah, you're probably going to be in the same, going back to the first question, 
you, that might be one of the reasons why you're doing, you know, two hours of cardio because you're just basically walking, you know, and you're, and you're uh, sitting at a desk job the rest of the day. So, you know, there's, these are all factors. So volume versus intensity. What I will say when you're talking scientifically, right, when you're looking at hormone production and the things that happen during workouts, um, when you first work out, you'll have generally a, a good spike in your growth hormone. So you'll get a good spike um, from that, from, from when you're lifting really hard. So you'll get that spike, but then you're getting this slow elevation of cortisol hormone too. And there's this, there's a theory, and this is not a proven thing. There's a lot of the things you can't really prove. There's this theory where, hey, if, you, if you're at that point where growth hormones, so you get your initial growth hormone spike, and then your cortisol is slowly going up as like a very consistent slow elevation and the growth hormones crossing down. And th the theory is, okay, well, if you work out too long, your growth hormone will be lower than your cortisol elevation at a certain point of the workout. So you should definitely get in your intensity before that happens, um, which is thought to be around that 50 minute, one hour marker. So, mm -hmm. and that, that's, that, you know, usually it's funny. It's one of those things that's like meathead science that, uh, that gets figured out by real science eventually. And when I look at meathead science, I never discredit meathead science. And I think that any real scientist, any real science, nutrition, exercise science guy, whatever, who always say, oh, it's bro science. I think that gem them just saying that will keep them from even looking at the possibility that they're right. And I think that that's a huge mistake. So um, with bro science coming up to the conclusion of, yeah, an hour workout is what all the bros say, right? And then now, you know, science is kind of coming to that conclusion too. Again, the bros are right, right? So sometimes these guys, they figure it out. You know, they figure out what's worked. And so for years, it's been about an hour. That's kind of like the, the give the rule, uh, rule of thumb is, uh, is that. And um, it, it looks like they figured it out again, you know, ahead before, before science. So, um, so yeah, I think volume versus intensity, if you can maintain realistic intensity, shorten them up. But that's a high level of intensity. Uh, you know, I can tell you, I used to be able to do that. And I have to work up to being able to do that right now. I wouldn't give myself that freedom of saying, yeah, I can get in 30, 40 minutes. Cause I don't, I won't crush myself like I used to. Um, so, but if you're there, there you go, you know? All right. So next question, how does your cardio change in peak week? So this is one of those questions I can't really give you a straight answer. <laughs> it changes. Every prep is different. And I've had preps where I did cardio almost every day. And I've also had preps where I did zero cardio. So <laughs> it depends on how close I am to a show. How lean do I need to get? How am I in the do, do I need to lean out more than I already am? Am I coming off another show where I'm already lean? So these are all factors that you have to consider. And there's no, there's no, yeah, there's no straight answer. It's always different. Same thing with calories and macros. I think people, they ask me this all the time and it's like hard to give a straight answer. Just like, oh yeah, it's always this amount. I always do this. No, every single prep is different, I, you know? But I will say, ideally, the, the goal would to be, like ready ahead of time so you don't have to do a whole bunch of cardio right before your show uh, the week of peak week right usually i i mean in a perfect world i would do very minimal cardio if any and that would be just like very low intensity just because um, you know just to keep the water retention down if any and just keep the body moving but um the goal would not to be to get leaner during peak week necessarily i would like to be ready ahead of time you know in a perfect world so there you go. Yeah. Um, in a peak week. So let's, you know, just going into the peak week scenario for cardio. Just remember what you're trying to do during peak week. If you're in your peak week and you're trying to get in shape the rest of the way, like that's you, you messed up. You, you missed the ball there. Um, we are not trying to get in shape the rest of the way on peak week. And that's the thing is it's funny. I was actually talking to a coach yesterday um, at fit club about, about this and, he was like, yeah, he's like with, he, cause he does a lot of bodybuilders and he was explaining like how, how different it is with bodybuilders and bikini and whatnot. And I was like, yeah, it's, it's significantly different. Cause then bodybuilders, you're trying to get, you know, striations in the quads and you're trying to cut down and get that, that paper thin skin. And you're trying to do all these tiny manipulations at the end, even, even, um, cutting, you know, sparing some or wasting some muscle with being drier and, and not getting as much water in as like a bodybuilder, you know? Um, and dehydrating and things like that to, to get them super, super dry. I'm like, but you don't do those things with bikini. Like you don't, you wouldn't like have a, a bikini girl, like cut water and be flatter on stage. And to that point, cause she doesn't need to get that dry. 
And it was like, yeah, you just, he's like, yeah, I was just telling my bikini girls just show up. And they thought it was the weirdest thing. I was like, yeah, that's you're doing, you're doing pretty much the right thing. You don't need to do too much for a bikini to get them that dry. Cause you're going to, you're going to, there's always a give and take. It's not like you just say, Hey, yeah, let's get your muscles super, super full. And then you're just going to be dry on stage. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. If you go try to get super, super full, you're going to be probably a little bit more watery. If you're going to get super, super dry, we're going to probably be a little bit less full. So like, there's not, it's not like there's this like perfect thing. You could just show up dry and full, you know, like it, it's fine. There's always a give and take. So, um, and that's with all things in life. Right. So, um, with, with bikini specifically, what we're trying to do that last week is we're trying to, uh, reduce your inflammation, get your water retention down, get your digestion, right. Get your waistline as small as we can. We're trying to fill you up, you know, depending on how much muscle you have, you know, if you have a ton of muscle, we might, you, you could probably, Take the approach of not filling them out 100% because they have so much muscle. And then you can err on the side of being drier, you know. Um, but just understand that peak week is not some magic tool that you use at the end to get the last 10 pounds of body fat off of you and to really tighten you up. And all of a sudden, if you ate two rice cakes instead of three, you know, before you pump on stage, you're you're winning the Olympia versus placing last, right? It's It doesn't work like that, guys. And I you got it. Just so I want to throw it out there because... So many people freak out about peak week. I send them a peak week or something and they're like, oh, what do I do here? What do I do here? What do I? I'm like, you just eat. <laughs> you just eat your food. The haze in the barn, as I yeah. like to say. The hard work is done. Peak week should be for rest and you're recovery. You're cruising. You're on cruise. Yeah. Peak week is cruise control and you're just putting, uh, making sure your gas tank is full. That's it. You're not like, you know, shaking out the engine or anything like that. That's just it's a usually new the yeah. easiest week yeah. out of all the prep. Yeah. So don't overthink peak week, especially if you're in bikini. If you're in bodybuilding, you're going to get super dry with cross striations and all that. Yeah. It's going to get a little bit more technical, but with bikini, you're just getting full and you're getting your inflammation down. You're getting your waistline tight. Make sure your digestion's right. You know, there might be some minor things at the end. You're checking in more times that week. I'll have a client check in, you know, four times or so that week. And, um, just to make sure they're full after they've had their, their carb loads or whatever. And then we just, you know, go day by day, but it's nothing crazy, guys. It's just a little bit more carbs one day, a little bit less carbs the next day. How are you absorbing those carbs? Okay, cool. You're good. Reduce your cardio. That's it. You know, it's nothing crazy. So. As it should be. Yeah. Okay. Next question. What percentage of muscle can you expect to lose with losing only a pound a week? That's a good one. But keeping the protein high. You want me to go for it? Yeah. This is an Adam okay. question. <laughs> right, yeah. Is this a joke? <laughs> so this is a this, <laughs> <laughs> this is You're a, funny. This is a good question because there's a multi-layered question here. Um, but you know what? First, actually, look at this. So we have a lo local Las. Is it a Las Vegan or Las Vegan? I think it's a Vegan by Vegan Las Vegan. vegan. <laughs> Las Vegan. <laughs> she might be. She's a, so shout out to Camille's one one two. Did you know this? So Herbally Grounded on West Charleston in Vegas has real stevia by the ounce. It's even what? It's even green and not bitter. Oh, I've had green stevia before. You don't like it? I never heard I of it. I don't. But if she says it's not bitter, then it's probably good. But yeah, it kind of tastes like grass. Well, we got to try that. Shout out to them, Herbally Grounded. I'm going to go in there and check Heck it out. Yeah. That's whoop, cool. Whoop. I love local places too. Local business, right? Heck yeah. Okay. So question is how... Um, how much muscle is an acceptable loss of muscle, right? During a prep is probably the question. Now, this is good. This is a hard question. It's a really hard question. Um, okay, so first we have to identify how muscle and we have to separate. So we have to separate muscle and we have to, so skeletal muscle and lean mass, okay? So remember, lean mass is anything that's not body fat, okay? Everything that's not body fat is considered lean mass. The water that you store in your body, your blood, your Muscle tissue, of course, skeletal muscle, um, organs, anything that's not fat bone is considered lean mass, okay? So it's not fat mass, so it's lean mass by default, right? So, um, okay, so there's lean mass and then there's skeletal muscle. Okay, there is no possible way for you to go through a prep and not lose some lean mass, okay? That's, that's so if you're trying to hold on to every single ounce of lean mass, it's not going to happen, okay? Because when you lose fat, you lose water and that is lean mass, all right? So, you have to identify these things as what they truly are. So when a, like when a judge says to a competitor, which I hate when judges do this, they say, oh, you just need to be fuller. And I'm, then the competitor comes to me and they're like, oh, the judge said I was flat. And I'm like, they say you're flat or they say you need to be fuller because there's two different things. So fuller means two things. It means you need more muscle 
And also fuller means that you're flat and you could have had more carbs to fill out your muscle. They both mean fuller. So, but when a judge says fuller, they mean you need more muscle because they don't know where you started most likely, unless they really, really know you well. So um, that's a, that's a, that's another thing. But anyway, that being said, okay, you're in a prep, typically 20% of your 20% loss is, is a, accepted. So if you lose one pound, 20% of that one pound, 0.2 pounds would be an acceptable loss in water weight. How much skeletal muscle is going to be lost on that? Very, very few. If you're working out hard and you're eating adequate protein, like you said, but remember your workouts need to be intense in order to keep your lean mass. Your body needs to have a reason to preserve this lean mass through extreme calorie um, deficits. So, uh, or to I guess I should be saying skeletal muscle since we've identified it. So it needs to find a way to preserve the skeletal muscle since uh, you're in a big caloric deficit. So you have to maintain the intensity. And that's the problem that some of these coaches run into when they give someone, you know, two hours of cardio and 900 calories. How can you possibly expect that client to maintain the intensity and the strength of their workouts when they're burning more calories doing cardio than they are even eating, right? You give someone a 900 calorie diet, but then you give them two hours of cardio a day. They're burning 900 calories on their, on their cardio alone. So they're at like a net zero calories for the day before they even move. That's crazy town. And then you expect that person to maintain proper intensity of their workouts and come in super full and, and maintain the intensity and maintain all their skeletal muscles. It's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. So um, that's why I'm like really against like these super high cardio, low calorie preps. Because that's the bigger factor that no one thinks about. Most of the girls and guys are like, whatever, I'm tough and I'll wear it like a badge of honor and I'll, I'll do the two hours of cardio and, and work out and I'll complain about it on Instagram. But really, I'm not complaining about it on Instagram. I'm kind of bragging about it on Instagram saying I'm willing to go through this, right? Which is, you guys know, and you guys know, you, some of you are like, yeah, I do that. <laughs> you know, because I did that. I was not above it. I said it too. When I was younger, I was like, yeah, you know, grinding out cardio sucks. You know, like, it's a choice. You choose to do that, right? So, that's, that's the reality of things. So if you can main, again, this all comes down to the, the off season. If you can maintain, you know, staying, you know, one pound above one pound per week loss above your, um, above your stage weight. So a good rule of thumb would be like 1%. If you could be 1%. So to, for simple numbers, let's say you compete at 125 pounds, 1.25 pounds would be 1%. That should be the farthest you should be out from a show. So um, ten, if you're 10 weeks out, you'd be 12 and a half pounds above stage weight. That's, and that's, even that's going to be not easy. But if you have to go harder than that, you're probably going to start losing some lean mass because you have to diet so hard. You're going to lose strength in the gym. You're not going to be able to give the proper intensities in the gym. And then you're going to lose some more skeletal muscle. But no matter what, if you're looking at like lean mass versus body fat, you're going to lose some lean mass because you're going to lose water weight when you lose body fat. Um, and, and you might lose a little bit of skeletal muscle too. You're going to be glucose depleted. Uh, that's, therefore, the muscle is going to have less water stored in it. You're going to have less lean mass because of that. And so there's a whole bunch of factors that calculate lean mass versus skeletal muscle. But skeletal muscle should be very, very little. And, and some people can even grow into it. It just depends. But it should be very, very little if you can maintain the intensity. Mm. Whew. Whew. <laughs> Wow. I feel like that Will Ferrell thing where he goes up, he goes that, that, that speech on, uh, what was it? Where there, what's that movie? And then he like blacks out. And he's like, I don't know. I blacked out. And he like said this. I got to I'm, I'm forgetting. You know what I'm talking about, Arthur? What is it? They're like, they join a frat. They like make a frat. <laughs> it's a good, Ashley's terrible at movies. She would never be a movie person you could, you could actually uh, shoot to her for. What is it? Is it? Okay. <laughs> Frank the Tank. <laughs> Too funny. Oh, we're probably going to go on here. It's so funny. Well, hopefully you guys know what he's referring to because yeah. I don't. <laughs> Ashley's the worst with movies. She's I know. You still haven't seen, what was it? It was crazy. It was like um, Peter Pan, right? It was Peter Pan. Has everyone seen yeah, that? Yeah, every American has I mean, seen that her. seems like, I mean, that might be a little, even for me a little before my time if you're talking about the There's Disney. There's so many versions the of Disney, it. The Disney Peter Pan. I don't know. It's was so, it like 1970 or something? I don't know. It's so wild. It's so <laughs> wild. I guess I've had you've seen peanut Peter butter Pan, before. Right? Everyone's seen Peter Pan. Yeah, peanut seen butter it. is just as good, I would say. <laughs> yeah, it's close enough, right? She's a, so Ashley's a documentary person. Oh, She's watched documentaries, and uh, yeah, I don't like things that aren't real or based off a true story. It just like it's not worth my time. Like, <laughs> this isn't 
This is unrealistic to me. I just can't relate. Ashley keeps it real. I do, like a banana peel. <laughs> you're, you know? You're, really, you're looking very kill, know, very kill Bill banana, today. Yeah. Very banana-y. Um, okay, so the next question. So it kind of actually goes off of what you were just talking about a little bit. What is the best way to burn glute fat while retaining muscle mass? Okay, so even 2022, we still get this idea that we can pinpoint where to burn fat and you can't unfortunately you can't um say i got a lot of fat on my arms how do i burn this this chunk of fat on my arm can't really do that um but what you can do the good news is if you kind of build up the muscle around it give the illusion that it is leaner just because it's kind of like more of a 3d effect and um filling out a little bit, create a little more shape to that area, but you can't really pick and choose that. Now, question for Adam is, so if there is an exception to that, would it be hormonal uh, type of fat distribution, if that makes sense? So, for example, women um, tend to put on more fat around the thighs, around the glutes. So my question for Adam is, and this is my question, could there be an exception to the rule where you can't pinpoint fat if it's a hormonal-based fat distribution? Well, there's varying factors, though, that wouldn't necessarily be causation, right? So uh-huh. you have genetics. Women genetically are more built like a pear, and men I've are more I've never built. been more offended <laughs> in my life. And men are built like an apple. So that's what so yes. men are. That's why men die earlier too, because they hold all their weight and, and everything here. I that's because you guys worked harder. Well, there's a lot of factors. So it's <laughs> it's uh <laughs> there's a lot of factors. And more risk risky higher, things. Higher weight, so harder on the heart. Uh, more more to, more on the, more on the heart. We don't have periods regularly, so we have we don't um, get new blood cells often like you guys do. So you guys are constantly replacing blood cells uh, when you have your periods. Uh, so that's why I always recommend guys, especially bodybuilders, to to, to get donate blood because it, it basically is changing their oil and keeping them healthier, and helping um, other people at the same time. Yeah, yeah, and you help other people at the same time. And then also um, the uh, the way we hold our body fat and hold our weight is harder on the heart because we hold it up top more than you guys do, and you guys hold it more down down low. So it's Hello. actually harder on the heart to to have that extra weight and body fat of, so on top of the heart. And so. and you participate in more risk taking activities like doing donuts in the parking lot. I've never <laughs> seen a girl do that. I have done like, that in this me, parking lot. Let me speed on the highway at at a hundred miles an hour or something. Like girls don't do that. We're just like, you know, risky yeah. activities. The uh, you know. So I just wanted to add that in there. Yeah, too. that's that's uh, but that's a good that's a good point. So yeah, I don't know <laughs> if it would be the hormonal would be causation or more of a genetic factor mm-hmm. being that they're just built like that more yep. anyway. And then maybe. This is the problem is, is that here's, here's the issue that we run into a lot of, and we blame it a lot on hormones, mm-hmm. um, necessarily seeing if, if, if that's the reason for it or if there's other factors into it. So one of them, and this is a good, this kind of goes into like a full another question, which is why did, why is it harder for me to lose body fat when I'm older? And they always say, oh, cause my hormones are messed up, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, my hormones are this. Well, the hormone thing it is possible. It is possible when you're older, your hormones are messed up, right? They're, they're not where they were. Um, very likely your growth hormone is, is not as high as it used to be. Uh, but most other hormones for most people are generally okay, even when they're older. And the thing is we can solve that problem now. You know, when you used to look at someone who was 50 years old, you know, 50 years ago, it was totally different than someone who's 50 years old. Now they can, you can reverse the process or slow the process of aging quite a bit. You see, you know, Mike Tyson starting to box again. He was like 57 or something, right? He like boxed again. And then like you would have never seen that happen before. You'd have been like, what is he doing? He's going to break. Like it, Now it's like he's still an animal and can just destroy destroy men in the ring. Like nothing changed much. You know, he's probably a little slower, right? But not, but his strength is still there. He's still, I mean, that's and it's because he can maintain his hormones now. He can, he can look inside and say, okay, this is where the, this is what we need. Your testosterone is lower, your growth hormones lower, your thyroid hormone, whatever. So that's a, that's a factor. So here's the, here's the real reason. So that question probably comes from someone who's st- storing more body fat now on their legs and glutes than they were before when they were younger and it was easier for them. Right. But now we have to go into, okay, was it because you were younger and it was easier for you? Or was it simply the factor of when you were younger, you were moving more than you are now. And that's usually the reason. Okay. So um, usually you move a lot less as you get older than when you were younger. And that's usually why people have a harder time losing body fat when they're older. It's really simple, you know, but it's not usually hormonally. And if it's hormones, we can figure that out, but it's usually, yeah, you move a lot less. That's of course you're going to be fatter. You don't, you eat the same and you move less. You might even eat more and move less, you know? 
So yeah, <laughs> but it's not hormonal. It's nothing changed. You just got less active, you know? Yes. So, okay. and even me, I'm less active and it sucks, you know? Cause I used to be. Shame on you. I know. Well, I used to be, a, I used to be a trainer all day and like move around all day. You burned so many steps and now I like sit in the chair a lot. So <sighs> doing, right. doing check-ins and stuff. When I retire, I'm going to train personal train. It'd be, it'd be fun. I, I'm actually going to re- do more personal training, like hey, starting soon. We, we get one training. I train with Adam once a week yes. and you guys should be jealous. Cause I think I'm the <laughs> only one. Yeah. Right now, yeah, yeah. Well, I guess Kimber too, but that doesn't count. But hey, <laughs> I feel special. So. Yeah, Phoebe will start next week when we're eight weeks out. I feel weeks. less special now, but still kind of special. So there, you getting some, you yeah. getting a little bit of steps in. Yeah, so you know, you're welcome for that. Adam. I love it. I love. You're welcome, you. <laughs> you're welcome for letting me be trained by you. You're welcome. I'm doing you such a service. I met this. I met this uh, this little smart ass <laughs> girl once, and it was the cutest thing in the world. And it took me a second to get into it. And it's like her. She was like eight years old, and um, I met her, and she goes, "I said, I said, what's your what's her name?" So I was with her parents, and she was like, "I forget her name." I was like Sarah. She's like, "What's your name, Sarah?" I was like, "I'm Sarah. I'm Adam. Nice to meet you." So she's like. She goes, what a pleasure for it is for you to meet me. Oh, <laughs> like, oh, Sarah, it. how nice. How, you know, you say it's nice to meet you. She yeah. said, how nice for you to meet me is what she said. <laughs> she's like, my name's Sarah. It's nice for you to meet me. <laughs> and her mom was like, she's into this thing. Now. She's, she's into like, this thing. She's been doing that for weeks. She now. thinks very highly of herself. So, that Aww. girl's going play. She's probably yeah. the next president of the United States. Okay, there you go. <laughs> okay, so the next question. What do we think about girls with huge glutes in the bikini division? So... You know, I think bikini has gotten the rap for just being like glutes and glutes and glutes. And I think even to this day, people have the idea that, you know, in bikini, glutes is uh, the most important thing. And of course it is important, but we're also forgetting symmetry. Okay. So the only division that shouldn't be, that doesn't, the, the, the only division that the sym- symmetry rule doesn't apply to is wellness. Okay. So You know, I think, like, we have this idea that bikini girls should have, like, huge glutes, and that's, like, the main focus, when in reality it's not. That would be more of a wellness thing. So we're definitely losing sight that, hey, balance and symmetry is still applied to bikini. So I think, like, a lot of times, uh, especially newer um, viewers or, I guess, fans of the sport of bikini might be like, I don't understand her glutes were so big and they were so defined and I could see a full hamstring tie in. Why didn't she do well? And in reality, it might be that it was too much for a bikini because in bikini, there are parameters. You don't want to start looking like a wellness competitor. And also at the same time, you want to make sure your glutes are symmetrical with the rest of your body. And I know Adam here has been very vocal about this publicly about like, you know, stop bragging about how like defined and your glutes are and how big they are when in reality that's not necessarily what bikini is about you know yeah that's more of a that's more of the instagram yeah. model thing and i think people they kind of mix those two together sometimes and they think that having the bigger glutes is going to have you win and that's what i say and that's what you know i would say out of all the olympia bikini champions probably i would hear the most from about would be about angelica and people were like, I don't get it why she why she wins because she's there's nothing really specifically like extraordinary about her physique, you know. Like there's nothing specifically extraordinary. And I'm like, that's why she wins, guys. Like there's nothing that is too much on anywhere. And that's what I always say: is you want to be great everywhere, or if you want to be good everywhere, but not great anywhere. That's always the goal, right? So you shouldn't look at someone's physique and say oh, she's got the best, the biggest glutes on stage. It's so impressive. Like it shouldn't be like, it should be a work of art and everything just flows and balances. Like you don't look at a sculpture and think about it. Think about common sense in this, right? Um, You don't look at a sculpture, like a beautiful sculpture. Let's say like the sculpture of David, right? You don't look at that and it's like, dang, his shoulders are pretty jacked, right? You don't look at it. And that's what bikini is. It's It's a work of art. It's a sculpture and nothing should stick out from that sculpture where you're like, you see that sculpture of David? He's got big glutes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he's got some big glutes. Like you wouldn't, it wouldn't be art. You know, it would be a joke, right? It wouldn't, you wouldn't be like, oh, he was, but the artist wants perfect balance and symmetry and it to be looked at from every angle just as, and it looks the same from every angle and perfect, perfect 
um, ratios, you know, and that's bikini guys. That's what bikini should be. You know, it's the, it's one of the last truly balanced divisions, you know, the truly, truly balanced divisions. Cause a lot of other divisions you're going to see guys winning that have those more things. Oh, he's got crazy arms. You know, you would talk about Phil Heath's arms. You'd be like, Oh, he's got this, whatever. Right. And so, um, not in bikini bikini is about balance in it's about everything balance and beauty flow and posing and hair and makeup and tan and everything matters so yeah just remember look at what you're doing sport wise look at your physique balance it and work on that art form that's why i love bikini so much because it 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 challenges the best artists out there and the best coaches yeah, you know definitely and i think people would be surprised to find out that like in bikini like I think almost everyone has like a body part that they just don't train anymore or really uh, cut back on training because it's gotten overdeveloped, right? Whereas in like in bodybuilding, you just go wild, like just go wild with it. Just like, <laughs> yeah, get it bigger or whatever. But in bikini, it's like, oh, this body part's getting a little too developed. We've got to back off. And, you know, for me, that's like my abs were like, oh my gosh, got to you know, gotta cut uh, the ab training off again. But, um, you know, we all kind of have that area that it's like, well, it's a little too much for bikini or we're borderline too much for bikini in a certain area. Got to back it off, you know? So I think people, you know, forget again that it's, 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 um, about balance and, and symmetry and not, not, Oh, the biggest glutes on stage or the, the most defined glutes with the crispy tie in V thing that goes down the leg. You know, it's not, that's not what bikini was intended for. So yeah. Anya just got yeah. pulled back on all her workouts cause she got too jacked. So now she's oh, just chilling. Yeah, she's just uh, pump, just pump workouts now. Okay, that's well, it. that's not my problem. <laughs> I got the opposite I will problem. Say, when you can get I a, have some of that? Can I have some of that? When you get a girl to that stage, they generally don't like it, you know, because they're usually to, uh, for a girl to get to that stage. They really love working out. Mm -hmm. They like it for a week or two, and they're like, "Oh yeah, it'd be nice. It'd be nice mm -hmm. to be take a little break." But then once you get someone who's like a real like just loves to be in the gym, they generally it's it's a hard. It's hard for a lot of them. Alan is one of them too, that she like loves working out, you know, yeah. and you pull someone back off workouts and you're just like, it, it's. Dang, if you pulled me off workouts, I'd be like, okay. <laughs> it's, it's easy now. <laughs> I was actually going to double yours. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I will take some of her shoulders any day, so. Yeah, she's got a little jacked all of a sudden. Well, so. oops, oopsie daisy, it got too jacked. <laughs> oopsie daisy, muscles oopsie, popped out. Oopsies. Okay, so this next question, Adam, is for you because. They mention your name specifically. Mm. How often does Adam change calories and macros on the meal plan for a client in the off season? Oh, that could be. I mean, that's oh. all the time. Yeah. All the time. Um, I would say, I would say on average, I'm changing. So I use a micro progression system. I don't go through and change like a full meal plan around where it's going to be like a full new meal plan every, you know month and it's completely different <clears throat> i'll pull and push so like based on your results so i'm trying to hit a weekly target so this is kind of like my methodology of, of how i do things so i'm trying to hit a weekly target and so i ask for people i ask them for their pictures their front and back pictures their waistline measurement their hip measurement and then a weekly target that we're trying to reach so for example in the off season i'm trying to avoid adding one week of prep every week that's kind of my rule of thumb here so if that person can lose a quarter of an inch on their waistline every week when we're in prep, I definitely don't want to be adding a quarter of an inch every week while they're in off season. So I'll push the calories as high as we can get away with without that happening. So I'm trying to keep them lean and maybe gain a quarter of an inch every three weeks or so. So that way I'm gaining less, I'm gaining more weeks of, of gaining than cutting. If I'm doing one for one and that means I'm just gaining for six months and cutting for six months. So I'm going to try to push that as much as I can and try to go through gaining for nine months and only cutting for three months, you know, and that would be, that would be the long-term, the goal. So based on their check-in and how much they gain that week and on their waistline gain that week, I'm going to push the calories as high as I possibly can and cardio as low as I possibly can to set them up for success when they start their in-season um, contest prep um, without gaining any body fat on their waistline. So that means I might change things so little. Like sometimes I change things and people are like, hey, what'd you, what'd you change? And I'm like, do you see that meal there? There was like 35 carbs in it. Now there's 20, like, like in that one meal. But it's like every week we're changing things, every week. So it just depends. If you have a perfect week and let's say it's a, a girl and she gained 1% of her body weight, but she didn't gain anything on the, on the body fat uh, areas that I'm concerned with, then, you know, we're probably going to, even that's area, you might even get more calories, you know? Mm -hmm. 
So it's just, it's a weekly basis. It's on a weekly basis. And um, whether you do it yourself or with a coach, you should be tracking your measurements. You should be tracking your weight. I know that there's some coaches that just do it off pictures. And I'm like, there is no way you can see the difference between someone when they're, especially when they're in their off season, like a week later, a week later, it's even hard after a month to see them a difference in their physique in pictures. So that's why you need those measurements. You need that weight. Cause that's going to be your real, your real markers there. Like I'm really, my eye is super trained. All I do is look at, all I do is look at physiques all day long. I can't, if someone brings in a picture in the off season and then they see your picture a week later um, and they expect me to tell me what measurements are different, I'm going to be like, you're crazy, dude. It's so hard to do. So, um, now when you're shredded and you're a week later, yeah, you're more shredded. It's obvious, but we're talking pretty lean <laughs> for that to happen. So yeah. So use your measurements, use your weight. Um, you need to use real trackers and then adjust accordingly from week to week basis. And it could be as much as a week, every week we're changing. It, it could be as low as every month, you know? Mm -hmm. So yeah. good, good stuff. Okay. So the next question, do you think breast implants are necessary to compete in a pro level show? Absolutely not necessary. <laughs> this is such a myth that I still hear to this day. No, first off, you can get a lot, you can get away with a lot with pillow stuffing. Let me just say that pillow stuffing, polyfill, you know, put that in there with some padding. You're good to go. Um, but you know, you'll see a lot of, a lot of, uh, breast implants on stage. And I think that's where people get the idea. And I understand, you know, girls, when they get lean, uh, that becomes a no longer an existent body part. So they want to get breast implants, but I will say if anything, sometimes it can actually hurt you because what it can do is definitely make you top heavy definitely make you top heavy. I would say if you're going to get them, get them, but don't do them for the sake of uh, competing because you can definitely find your way around it. And also, I, you know, just mentioning this, one big mistake I see with competitors is they'll get breast implants when they're very lean, you know, maybe right oh, after yeah. a show. And then when they become a normal person, because that will happen one day, you become a normal person and then you have body fat once again it's going to be too big. And even in the off season, sometimes it's like, whoa. So um, just keep that in mind. If you're considering getting it, don't do them just for the, the competition. Because believe me, there's ways around it. You don't need it. And there are girls without it on the Olympia stage, I can assure you that. So yeah. so don't for a second think it's a requirement or anything. And every, every judge will tell you the same. They're not necessarily looking at that, but it can be a distraction if it's too big. It can make you really top heavy, throw off your symmetry completely. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so. I, would, I would say it's true. Um, it, if it's trending any direction, it's to less. Of yeah. Oh, yeah. Because there's it's just not as like it's we're not in the panel Anderson days anymore. And and um, the I think a lot of girls now are more in the glute days. I think this is pretty, pretty common consensus. And it's like glutes are more having a big butt's more important than having big boobs. Yeah, these days. I feel like big boobs were like Pamela Anderson yeah. early two thousands or nineteen nineties. Like, yeah. and so I think it's just becoming so common that girls just don't aren't doing it as yeah. often anymore. And so you're seeing a lot more of that go into the competitions too. You're seeing less of it, and it's. it's, it's I don't think it ma matters at all. Sandy mm -hmm. actually specifically said this once at a seminar that she said she's never once looked at a girl and said. Oh, if she had implants, she would probably place higher. Yeah, there's she said no she's way. never seen a girl where that would make a difference. So, yeah. but I would, I would, she didn't, uh, she didn't address this. So this is not her words, but I would completely agree with you. I have seen girls who've gone too big and it really look awkward on stage. Yes. Like, yeah, it's, it doesn't look good when you're trying remember we talked about an art artistic body, not a Instagram body, you know? So, right. Totally. Totally. So if you're going to do it, be smart. Be Make smart sure. and think of how you're going to look yeah. when you're a normal person and or in the off season too. Just keep that in mind Yeah, because you can definitely screw yourself up right there too. Okay, so types of cardio equipment you recommend for prep. So I would say for me, my favorite um, piece of equipment for cardio would be the stop mill. I like it because you can, um, you almost get like a little glute workout within the cardio session, especially if you're doing things like hit cardio and using kickbacks as your active recovery and stuff. But um, yeah, I, I, I've gotten sore in my glutes before from doing step mill. So I think it's great. You know, you're getting a little, little mini glute pump in there while you're doing cardio. Yeah, I would agree. I think so. I like the order of cardio to be so stairs and treadmill. I put like at the same level mm -hmm. one. Yeah. And um, walking incline treadmill yeah, too. Yeah. Because the less stable you are, the more calories you're going to burn. So if you're, for example, sitting on a bike and you're doing the same level of intensity as you are when the stairs, you're going to burn way more calories on the stairs because you're on a less stable environment. You're using your whole body weight. 
on a bike, you're sitting and you're taking away a lot of your body weight. So, um, so yeah, you're going to burn less calories in that scenario. So I look at the, the best calorie burners as a, as a, uh, marker. Um, I would say one of the, so the, I would, I guess you'd say it like this, the, the more comfortable the cardio is, the less it's doing for you. Yeah, so absolutely. If you're in a car, if you're doing cardio and it's uncomfortable and you don't want to do it, that's probably the cardio you should be doing. You know, like who wants to do burpees? You know, Everyone. oh, oh my yeah. gosh! Everyone hates burpees. Burpee. Do you know why we all hate burpees? Because it burns a shitload of calories. and Your body's trying to keep you alive. <laughs> I only don't do them to keep alive. That's it. So, okay. well, thank goodness you're not <laughs> that's doing burpees. That's that's otherwise, it. you wouldn't be here today. Yeah, you know? it's purely it's purely for the benefit of this podcast and and to <laughs> stay around for you guys so 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 yeah no it's that's that's the 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 reality of things when you're burning a lot of calories your body's saying hey this is really hard you know trying to reserve that energy and so um giving you these cues to stop so um so i would start with stair stairs treadmill um you know a rower is okay is next after that the next one i would stay away from the elliptical is not the most effective cardio form if you have bad knees or something then yeah but that's a pretty stable environment. You're not burning your optimal calories there. If you're getting ready for shows, stairs or treadmill is pretty much what I would go with. Stairs or treadmill. Orange Theory classes are cool too. Oh yeah, I those love me fun. some Orange Throw Theory. Those, yes. in there. those are fun. So I would also add on to that, like you know, be aware of your own uh, physique as well, because. I would, for example, if a bikini girl was pretty quad dominant, I would say don't do bike because you might get yeah. a little secondhand uh, workout with uh, the quads on the bike. And same thing like skinny legs, maybe they shouldn't be running. Um, so it, it's going to be dependent on your physique as well. Um, but yeah, just like you said, probably the harder, the better. Try not to hang on if you can. And I understand for some scenarios you have to, like if we're doing kickbacks on the step. Well, of course you got to you got to hold on. But, you know, I think a lot of times people hang on to it a little too much and just put all their body weight to, to prop themselves up on, on things like elliptical step mill, things like that. But, you know, another thing to take into consideration too is, is it enjoyable for you? I know Adam said that if it's not fun, it's probably working, but also at the same time, you can throw some fun cardio in there as well. Like the orange theory, for example, I don't, classes too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I don't, I wouldn't do that. I would, I, you know what keep from a physique standpoint, I wouldn't do that or boxing because I'm thinking of ab engagement see so there's another example know your own physique and if it's going to kind of target those things maybe not the best for it because i'm thinking like man i'm going to get some obliques going on i'm going to get some some freaking serratus muscles my serratus is out of this world (laughs) we can't be having more serratus i've had some girls do that and they're like off season when they just when they were too muscular but yeah i wonder if they they are doing anything their question do their their scans or 3d scans and see if it's doing anything you're right it's good it's a good question good point and also i would say i know crossfit can be very popular but even that I, if you take a look at what a crossfitter looks like, they they tend to be very trap dominated and very yeah. blocky. So that's another thing that I'd be like, man, eh, yeah, maybe maybe limit that if that's the kind of workout you want to do. But again, know your body. What are you trying to achieve? Is it something that is um, enjoyable for you, and is it um, efficient type of cardio, or are you just wasting your time? So all things to take into consideration. Yeah. Okay. Well, we have one. We have one person one more on here question? Said, that said, "I love burpees." Oh. Oh, who are you? I don't know. I think they're a psychopath. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if that's a real human right now. I think that's, that's a bot. Russian that's bot. That's a bot. Yeah, Russian bot. There's no right, way. Let's see There's no way. Um, there was one good one um, in here. Let me ask ask it because I, I want to I did post this out there for people to see it. So I want to at least ask one of these questions, answer one of these questions. Uh, but the question was about mini cuts while in off season for doing these short mini cuts. Oh, here it is. Benefits draw or drawbacks from doing a mini cut say four to six weeks during improvement season, at least five months till the next show. So the only question, oh, it's the same burpee person. (laughs) Yes, maybe it's not a Russian bot. Someone actually likes it. So (laughs) so, um, with that, with doing the mini cuts, I think that they're great. I don't, I think there's a, a lot of benefit to doing the mini cuts. And I think one of the biggest benefits of doing a mini cut when you're in the off season is you can go drastically low in calories for like a week period maybe two weeks period, they actually tested this going drastically low in calories for a two week period. And at the end of it, they tested them. So they tested the metabolism beginning of this. They tested metabolism at the end and there was no significant difference in the starting point and the ending point metabolism with extreme dieting for two week periods. So taking that into account, 
um, if you're in a building season and you wanted to really crush it and let's say you're, you want to maintain your body fat in the off season, that's a definitely an approach you can use. We do these things, uh, we'll call them hell leaks, you know, um, which <laughs> they pretty much are. It's basically, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's extreme. It's an extreme diet for one week period where, but usually I'll even cut their workouts that week because they're not going to give me intense workouts anyway. So I'll just have them do cardio that week and cut the, cut the, uh, cut the workouts that week and, um, eat, you know, pretty low calories for one week periods, basically protein only diet for a week when they're in prep. And it's, it's nice. It, it keeps them feeling good. keeps them feeling lean. It gives you, you know, you lose a lot because your metabolism really ramped up doing this off season part of it. So your metabolism super ramped up and you take advantage of it. Um, and the odds of you losing any real skeletal muscle in that short of a period of time is pretty low, like very, very low. So, um, yeah, so I think that there's a lot of benefit to doing it and keeping you in check. And, um, yeah, and it makes your, your in-season even easier. Yeah, Heck, yeah. I mean, we all want to do that every once in a while. You know, I think uh, when you feel, like, sluggish and puffy in the off-season and maybe you have an event coming up, like, oh, I want to look good for this event, you know, that would make sense. So, yeah, we're all about it here. Any other questions before we sign off, Adam? Nope. Okay, That's wow. It. Okay. Some, yeah. Well, thank you all for joining us here today. We appreciate every one of you. Yes. You know? Even you, burpee person. Oh, and you know something? <laughs> I know, you know what? This sucks because in our last podcast, we said, oh, Phoebe's going to be our next guest in the podcast. Um, next guest. She's, uh, she's just kidding. Next week. <laughs> next week. JK. Next week. We got you. But we were not kidding about our posing class. <laughs> yes. On, on the first Saturday of November. November 5th, Saturday. November 5th, Saturday. And then we're not kidding uh, that you can save 10% on muscle egg with using code muscleegg.com forward slash team elite physique. And it gives Ashley more eggs. Eggs for Ashley. <laughs> eggs for Ashley. The only way She's I even wearing eat. this yellow yoke promo shirt. Yeah. How can you not? I know. It's <laughs> very intentional. And then very we also weren't joking about you saving 10% on Anna on bikinis, right? Oh, Ashley K. that K. wasn't a joke. That's all, all real. <laughs> Where's Sassy? Sassy the Sass What? You... You put them all the way over I'm there. I'm sorry. It's because they were putting in the TV. You guys <sighs> noticed we put a new set. We're getting our new set built out here. We're doing a whole bunch. And you have yours. I know. That was really disrespectful. And it's not even. I didn't even win mine. <laughs> it doesn't even have a bikini on there. That'll that'll never happen again, Ashley. Do you still, I'm, I feel so disrespected. Do you, do you still want to do this podcast with me after that? I'll have to think about it. <laughs> Honestly. I'll have to think about it. So tune in to Ashley's podcast, <laughs> Fitness with Ashley, next the week. The bikini <laughs> and not the brain. <laughs> so it's nice, nice hanging out with you guys while we had this chance. Bye. Bye. <laughs>